Hello everyone, welcome back to my video tutorials for spatial dataset deconvolution analysis. So in my previous video tutorial, I showed you all the analysis steps until the run RCTD. So now I finished this step and I saved the data just for the cortex object and also the RCTD object. We can click the RCTD object and have a look. You can see now in the result section, we have five list for the result. In the first list results data frame, that's why we have the cell types for each cell. In the sketched data set, you can see we have the first cell type, second cell type. We are going to use the first cell type for the sketched data set. So now we can add the result data frame into the cortex object using the add metadata function from thread. OK, so we added the metadata. We can have a look at the metadata. You can see now in the metadata, we have the first cell type, second cell type. You can see for the sketch, the C, this cell in the cluster zero, it is the extra site. Because we have the cell type information in the metadata, now we can use the DIMP node to have a look at the cell types. First, we can just run DIMP plot for the cortex. At the moment, the default C is the sketched C. Let's run. You can see we still have 24 cell canisters here. Because we have the cell type information in the first type column in the metadata, then we can use the group by function to label the cells. If we run the DIMP node plus the group by function, let's run. Let's zoom in. You can see now we have all the cell types information. At the end, you can see some cells are not uh, labeled, then it was named as an A. Because we have the cell type information for the sketched C, now we can project the cell types information to the full object. So before we project the cell types, we can change the NA labeling to unknown cell type. So we can get the cell type information from the first cell type column in the metadata. So first, we can change the cell type information in the first type column, the characters. Now we can change the NA labeling to unknown cell type. You can see we didn't label all the cell types in the sketched C dataset using the reference dataset. That's because the reference dataset was reduced to 200,000 cells and also any cell type with less than 25 cells was not used in the reference dataset. So we changed the NA labeling to unknown cell type we can use the DIMP not function again to check. You can see now we change the NA label to unknown cell type. So now we can project the sketched data set to the full data set. You can see the full C will be the spatial 0 0.008 micrometers. We use the full reduction as the PCA cortex. And the sketched C, we are using the sketched. And we named the sketched C reduction as the PCA cortex sketch. And the UMAP model is the UMAP cortex sketched. After named all the cell types in the full data set, we will get a column named the full first type. So now we can run the project data function to project the cell types from the sketched data to the full data set.
Okay, we finished the, the cell type projection from the sketched data to the full data set. Now we can set the default C for the full data set. We can have a look at the metadata again. You can see now, if we move to the end of the metadata, you can see here, we have a metadata column named the full first cell type for all the cells in the full data set. So if we use the DIMP node, use the cell type information in the full first type column, then we can see all the cell types in the full data set. So now we can use the DIMP plot plus the group by function for the full first cell type to see the U map for the cell types in the full data set. Let's zoom in. You can see now we have the cell type labeling for the full data set. So here are the cell canasters for the U map. We can also use the spatial dim plot function to see the cell types on the brain tissue. Let's run the spatial dim plot. We can zoom in again. You can see now we can see the cell types on the image. Okay, so we use the single cell RNA sequencing reference data set and uh, label the other cell types in the spatial data set. Now you can use the full data set to do other analysis for your research project. That's the video tutorial for spatial data set deconvolution analysis. Thank you for watching my video tutorial. See you next time.